Motivated by a heart and compassion for animals, Karen McMeekin has created an animal refuge in Crossville, Tennessee. Guided by a no-kill philosophy, she works hard to make sure each animal is treated with love and kindness and ensures a happy home or sanctuary for each one. We are here today in Crossville, Tennessee with Karen McMeekin and a time for pause. Thank you so much for having us out today. Thank you. Tell us a, uh, more about a time for pause and what your mission is and, and you know what you guys do here in the area. Well, originally it started so that we could create a way to lower the statistical numbers at the municipal shelter. We started programs originally, um, we were taking animals from the um, local municipal shelter and taking them out for adoptions because the hours of operation were challenging for the public. And then over the years, um, we created our own adoption center. So we're an alternative um, to the municipal shelter for animal surrenders and for specific cruelty cases. Mm -hmm. um, and so over the years I became educated through the no-kill philosophy and how to change your community into a no-kill. So that's our ultimate goal is to become a no-kill community. Um, now I know that you guys have had some things going on here in the Upper Cumberland area. Um, sometimes you get called out to come in and help with a rescue um, and helping animals that are in bad situations. So tell us a little bit about that. Yes, um, well I'm an animal cruelty investigator and I have a hotline for anonymous abuse. Um, anyone can call in that number and um, report suspected abuse. Uh, lately we've been called by the Sheriff's Department in uh, surrounding counties and asked for our assistance um, for um, a collection of the animals, seizing, and then potentially prosecuting. Okay, so you have the animals here. They, if you bring them in from a rescue, you nurse them back to health, you get them happy and, and ready for their future home. What is the process if someone wants to adopt an animal? Well, you're exactly right. We want to give them the love and the affection and attention that they may not have previously received. But sometimes the animals that come to us were loved you know for their whole life and situations occur where people need to uh, surrender their animal right and so a new person that would want to adopt from us would come in they'd fill out an adoption questionnaire they would meet a potential uh, animal that would fit their family right and then their entire family is invited and encouraged to come down and meet the animal uh, and then we go through a contract and home visit and potentially a veterinary background visit as well. How long is that process? How, how long do you go back and check on the animal and make sure they're adapting well and everything is, is going along great for them? Well, one of our policies is that we never want um, a, an animal to go into a home where the animal's unhappy or the family's not working out with the animal. So we have a part of our contract that all animals do return to us if there's an issue. So we keep continuous contact throughout the life of the pet if the adopter would so choose. But via contract, they will um, have contact with us for one year. Tell us a little bit about your grounds here, your, your um, establishment and what you have for the animals here. We like to call our, our place a, a sanctuary. It's a peaceful place, it's a loving place. Uh, one of the things about the, the no-kill philosophy is that we need to be available to the public. So we're here seven days a week with volunteers and staff members um, so people can visit our facility. We have uh, 11 acres, we have walking trails for the dogs, uh, we have indoor outdoor catteries, we have a quarantine facility, and all of our animals are up to date on vetting, they're microchipped, and their adoption fee is something you know that we consider um, negotiable in regards to a family's financial situation. Um, is there a story, is there some one particular, I know there are probably many, but one particular um, animal that has just had a wonderful success story um, by the way they've come to you and the home that they've gone into, is there one that you can talk about with us today? It's interesting when you say those stories I get emotional. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, because that's how I started a time for pause. Right. I had to give up a pet when I was 15 mm -hmm. and I never knew where it went. Okay. So that stayed with me forever. Right. And so some of our animals that come to us uh, come from loving homes, but people want that assurity that their animal is going to go somewhere wonderful. Okay. Recently we helped um, a woman who was having some uh, health issues mm -hmm. and she just wasn't sure how she was going to cope with life. Right. And she's actually the cover story of our next newsletter. Um, uh, Sherry and our dog uh, Sparky. So Sparky is now Sparky Sparks 
and he has changed her life. He's a little Shih Tzu mix who re recently lost his um, human. Um, she had passed away and the family had trusted us to take Sparky in and find a great home. And these two are a match made in heaven. Fabulous. Those are the success stories yes. that you are here for. Yes, ma'am. I know you've told us that you have animals sometimes that are surrendered from homes that for many reasons they have to give up their loved pet. And then you have rescue animals as well. So what does your facility do? What are you guys doing here to make them more comfortable? So our volunteers and our staff are, are very passionate. They love animals and that's why they've come to help A Time for Paws. So when an animal comes in, it's like one of their own. So they feel comfortable. It's, it's like a new life for them. Thank you for having us out today at A Time for Paws and letting us be a part of your uh, organization here. Thank and you. And get some education out there to our viewers.